I'm a fan. Welcome back to another edition of Track of the Wolves with yours truly, Ben Root. Let's look back at the week that was in Northern Sports with pretty much all of it on the diamond except for a little track and field action to mix in as well. Uh, baseball team was on the road over the weekend, uh, starting conference play down south at Augustana's place in Sioux Falls, and they went one and three down there against the Vikings. Uh, picked up a win in their first game, uh, three to two. Uh, James uh, Georgiakis, not Georgiakis as I may have said previously, uh, picks up the win in that first game. Six innings of work. Uh, he allowed six hits, a couple runs, and uh, got the victory. Save goes to Cassidy Gaines in that one. Team gets the win despite giving up or uh, picking up only two hits in the game. Uh, they were hit by pitches seven times in the game, but no brawl broke out, so that's good news. Uh, Lucas Threns hit by a pitch for a ribby. A couple of RBI ground outs from Jack Schmidt and Clayton Nutting to get the win in that one. Uh, team would fall in the next contest, though, Friday down at Augie, 14 to nothing. Uh, Sean Powers gets roughed up for seven runs. Only four earned, though. Two and two-thirds innings of work for him in that loss. On Saturday, a uh, 14-2 loss in the opening contest. Cody Johns roughed up in two innings of work for 11 hits and 10 runs. Picked up a couple whiffs. Lucas Lorenz goes uh, deep for a solo jack, and Buddy Traxler with a run scored. And they'd follow that up with a 12-4 loss against the Vikings. Uh, in that ball game, Colton Boucher takes the loss. Five and two-thirds innings of work, 11 runs. Only seven earned in that one, though. Six strikeouts and one walk, while uh, Mark Abrahamson Goes one for three with a couple runs scored, a ribby and a double. Three for five game for Tyler Griffin, Trog and Lorenz with a triple. Two runs, or one run scored, two runs driven in, and a two for four performance. Team is seven and eight on the season right now. We'll chat with a couple of those Wolves players here in just a moment. Softball team, meanwhile, down south in Missouri, played MIAA teams and went uh, combined two and four, but uh, one of those two wins, a big one. Uh, on Friday, they came up short to Washburn, 10 to one. Lost there against Missy Elkins as Brittany Lash had a solo home run in that ball game for the only tally. They were then shut out by Missouri Western 3 0 and ended up with just one hit. Cami Smesmo suffering the defeat in that contest. Saturday action against Emporia State, the 11th ranked team in the country. They'd pick up an eight inning win, 4 2. Uh, solo home run there by Courtney Moore, forced extra innings as she popped that in the top of the seventh. And then they would get the win with three runs in the eighth and hold on for the two-run victory, 4-2. to two. Cammie Smesmo goes the full eight to get the win, allowing just one earned run on seven hits with a couple strikeouts there. They would then get shut out, though, 8 nothing by Central Missouri. Rachel Albright suffering the defeat in that ball game. Aaron Yancey had two walks, went one for one with a stolen base. And wrapping it up on Sunday, uh, they would come up short to Pittsburgh State, 10-2. to two. Smesmo suffered the defeat in that one, going three innings and giving up three runs, two earned on seven hits. And they would follow that up with a complete game victory by Smesmo, a four nothing win over North West Missouri State. She allowed uh, six, no, pardon me, four hits with six strikeouts and a walk. Brittany Lash and Caitlin Diltz each went two for three with a run scored in a ribby and a two run double there by Lauren Coons as well. Only other action for Northern was the uh, track and field teams. They were down south in Memphis, uh, not walking because that wouldn't get you good times. They were running and throwing and jumping and such. And uh, senior Mariah Nelson took a runner up in the shot put and discus. Brianne Jackson off that uh, All American performance in the indoor competition. Uh, ended up outdoors with the runner-up finish in the hammer throw. And Michaela Schlecht was third in the women's javelin, while Gina Burley finished fourth in the high jump. For the guys, best finishes there. You had Zach File taking uh, sixth place in the high jump, ninth place in the triple jump, and Brady Haar ninth in the hammer throw. Wolves will uh, be back in action later on this week in track and field and uh, some baseball and softball to tell you about. And speaking of baseball, we'll uh, chat with a couple of the players coming up next year on this edition of Track and the Wolves. NCAA championships are something special. Filled with memories we will carry with us for the rest of our lives. We ask that you cheer hard for your institutions. Acting responsibly and courteously towards those around you. In the spirit of sportsmanship, enjoy the game and let's provide our student athletes, coaches, officials, and fellow fans the respect they deserve. Welcome back to another edition of Track of the Wolves here and uh, Ben Roots alongside you here talking some baseball in this edition of Track of the Wolves and joined by a couple of your hardballers for the uh, Northern squad. Uh, Eric O'Brien, shortstop uh, and senior out of Olympia and uh, Colton Boucher, one of the pitchers on the squad coming in from that uh, same neck of the woods out in Chehalis, uh, a junior for the squad and uh, both went to Centralia Community College out there where I was 
couple of different uh, times. So uh, thanks for joining us, guys. Thanks for having Thank us. Um, well, what's, what would be a common misconception most people would have uh, when they think about Pacific Northwest and where you guys are from? What do you think is one of the top things that people think about the place, but it isn't really like that? Um, at least for, at least there's a lot of people that think it's just all it does is rain. I mean, it's sort of, it is true, <laughs> but it's like a rare occasion when it is sunny. I think it just, it beats all the, beats all the weather out there. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, it doesn't rain all the time, like everyone says. Like this summer, I think, when I was there back in June, it didn't rain at all. So we had that whole month where it didn't rain. So. And people, it, it seems to me people think it's rain like rain everywhere else. But when I've lived there, which is a couple different years, it was it's more of like a mist more than a rain. Oh yeah. So yeah. it's not really that annoying to yep. me. So, but it's funny because to me, I mean, what what would you think is colder, 20 degrees here or 20 degrees out there? Oh. 20 um, degrees out there yeah, for, for sure. sure. It's the it's the wet cold that kind of people. Okay, just want, making sure it wasn't me. Unless you, <laughs> yeah. unless you add in the wind, then it's all. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. That, and then that's the thing about you know it's not very windy at all, and that's the thing I like about it. I mean, that's the only one, the one downfall out here that I just can't stand is the wind. But you guys need to bring some of those big trees over here. We yeah, exactly. <laughs> block block some of the wind. <laughs> but uh, does the wind usually help you out there at Fossum Colton, or is it usually going the wrong way for it? Uh, it just depends on the day. I mean, as a pitcher, it can either help you or not make your day. <laughs> so, and that's the same thing as a hitter, man. It's if it's blowing out, you know, out center, you know, that's a huge advantage for us. But you know, sometimes you know when it's coming in, you know, we gotta gotta hit the ball on the ground and not hit it in the air. Um, Looking back uh, back there, what are some of your favorite places to eat in uh, that whole Olympia, you know, area there? Um, there is a, uh, there is like a huge barbecue place out in Olympia that I absolutely love. Ranch um, house? The ranch house it is. <laughs> there That's we exactly go. what it is. Um, oh, it's just unbelievable. The barbecue is just so good and, you know, I kind of compare it to Mavericks a little bit and how great it is, so. That's definitely my favorite place. Uh, for me, I'd have to say Papa Pete's in uh, Centralia. We just got a new Papa Pete's, and it's got to be one of the best pizza places I've had. So, cool. Sounds good. Is that uh, it's in Centralia or in Chehalis? Uh Centralia. Okay. Because there was one in Chehalis downtown that I remember. It closed like twice, and different people were there. That was really good too. Uh, yep. It seemed like they had like their own sausages they made or something there. Um, what do you miss most about uh, back in Washington? Um. I oh I got at least first say my family. I mean that's the one thing I definitely miss the most. Um, um, definitely over at, during the fall, it was it was hard not to be with my friends when we're watching the Seahawks games and going to Seahawks games. I think that was one of the, one of the other things I would definitely miss the most. Uh, for me, it's family too, um, and just the weather. I guess I enjoy the rain and stuff. So just because I was born there, I like the rain. Not so windy. And like we were talking before, so it's really nice. Is it kind of tough adjusting? I don't know what time you guys, what kind of schedule you're on, but you know, I like to try and watch games for my teams out there. You know, games <laughs> starting at nine o'clock or what have you. Is that kind of tough for you guys too, trying to catch up on the sports? Or? Yeah, especially when it comes to baseball, because I know usually when uh, the Mariners have their home games, uh, they don't start till nine out here, and so it's kind of you know, I, if I want to stay up and watch it, you know, I have to stay up till at least midnight. And sometimes if I have early class, you know, sometimes I don't want to do that. But that, that's like the one thing that's hard about it, probably. Yeah, uh, it is tough to watch baseball games, but for like our Seahawks and stuff, it was nice this year. They got a lot of national TV and stuff this year because they won the Super Bowl yeah. last year. So. So it was a bad, bad call. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go for the throw. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's hard to get into <laughs> it, but I definitely thought Marshawn should have got it. But it mm -hmm. happens. Um, now, what was the biggest adjustment other than the weather coming out here as far as, I guess, maybe uh, on the playing side of things? Um, maybe even weather related there. I don't know, the humidity is different and stuff there. Um, what's been uh, different there? Um, at least for last year when we first got in, um, this is like the first time I ever went a long way, like a long way from home and uh, at least meeting new guys. I mean, I knew I knew, you know, a couple guys like Colton and my uh, roommate Riley. Um, but I think just adjusting to a new college life and adjusting to new friendships, I think was probably one of the hardest things. Cause I know the first couple of weeks I was out here, I was not, I didn't want to be out here. I felt like I just, I was just so, so homesick. And so I think that was the, like the biggest thing was experiencing this being so far away from home and, you know, making new friendships. And I'm so glad I made the decision though. Uh, for me, I think the biggest thing was just the traveling on the bus. Uh, we didn't do that nearly as much in Washington cause it seemed like all the teams we played 
like an hour and a half, two hours away, so it wasn't as bad on the bus and stuff. Um, and then as a pitcher, trying to adjust to the metal bats was a hard thing because we, we uh, pitched against wood bats in our uh, at Centralia. So. Mm, okay. Um, and then you also ended up, uh, now I can't remember the name, uh, on a squad in Minnesota, uh, right, for some yeah. uh, other games too? Uh, yeah, the Wilmer Stingers uh, in the Northwoods League. Uh, that was a great experience playing against a bunch of those D1 prospects. So. Get a lot of travel with that too. I mean. Yeah, uh, I mean, I remember finishing games sometimes at 11 o'clock at night, and then you would have to drive clear till 5 a.m. and wake <laughs> up at 1 p.m. the next day to play again. So, I mean, it's yeah. the life if you can do baseball, I guess. Sure. So, We're talking to uh, Eric O'Brien and Colton Boucher with the uh, baseball squad of Northern here on track of the Wolves. And, um, you know, out there, I'm not sure how much indoor practice did you do out there um did you do much at all i mean obviously you have some here with the weather you have to yeah um I th especially when it rained we uh we had a huge hitting facility um out in centralia that we pretty much spent our whole time at when it was raining and so i mean it's kind of like the same thing out here when it's cold you know we have to be inside but i think it, it was a little bit better at centralia just since it wasn't so cold we actually got on the field a little bit more than we do now yeah, I would say uh, same thing in our facility. We had our, our dirt bullpens and stuff inside, um, but we had a MLB Lyle Overbay uh, bought our cage, so we have all that nice equipment and stuff in there to use. And uh, most uh, fields in Washington are turf now, so it gives oh, us yeah. the ability to play in the wet weather. So Okay. Yeah, it helps that he's from there, so he'll throw some money back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So for those that don't know there. Um, now you got to take the annual trip to uh, Arizona for uh, a couple weeks back for about a week and a half and everything. Um, how fun was that? Oh, it was great. I mean, shoot, going from 10 degree weather to 75, it was pretty. Uh, it was a pretty fun time, and you know, get, at least getting getting onto the field for the first time because we haven't we haven't seen a field since the fall. Um, so getting on the field, getting on a real field, you know, in the in that sunny and it was just good to you know finally come together as a team and you know see what we can do yeah it was uh i mean it felt good as a pitcher to get more than the gym length yeah. for throwing and stuff and just nice being that weather your, all your muscles that are sore feel a little better when it's that sunny out so um what else did you do other than uh play ball down there i know you guys had a few days off um yeah especially when, during our days off uh when my family came down we went up to uh spring training up in uh phoenix up in phoenix area and we catch the uh seattle mariners game so we got to do that yeah uh i watched the seattle mariners rockies game um mariners didn't look too good that game so i was yeah, a little right. upset but it's i mean that's games. spring training <laughs> games is yeah. what a lot of the guys did on their off days so yeah. did you guys get to uh did you see anybody off the off the field anywhere or anything, or sometimes uh, they're wandering around? No, nah, actually, I didn't see really anyone. Uh, we went with Coach to visit one of his friends from the Rockies organization, uh, but we didn't really get to meet anyone. We just saw a bunch of their, watched their minor league guys hit and stuff, so that was a cool experience, seeing what they got to do. And but Yeah, it's a lot different than going to the major league games, too. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, we, I've, gone, I've gone once when I still lived in, in SoCal, and. We went and watched the Angels play, I want to say the Diamondbacks, can't remember, but, and then uh, Benji Molina, when he was still on the team, was at the restaurant when we went. It's like, hey, what, you just walk What's by. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Then people are playing catch in the crowd with uh, yeah. like the right fielder. It's like, it's just totally, it's so much more kickback. It's yeah, yeah. Like, more oh. relaxed atmosphere. As long as you bring your suntan lotion. In exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, you started conference play this past week. You're 7-8 overall, 1-3 uh, after uh, the Augie trip. Uh, how do you feel the team's playing right now? Um, you know, there was, I mean, the first game we had, we ended up beating them 3-2. It was a good, uh, at least, momentum, but I know we kind of kind of fell back a little bit and uh, didn't really play so well, but we, we pretty much just beat ourselves, I think, in those games, and we just didn't play to our uh, potential. But, I mean, we, we were here last year. We went 1-3 and three against Augie to start the year last year. We turned around and went on a 10-game winning streak, so it's it's something that we faced before, and we have no problem facing, yeah, you know, the adversity and uh, coming back from it too. Yeah, uh, I would say the same thing. It was just we started off good with the win, uh, same as last year, and we thought we could get a couple more. Hopefully, the next day it just didn't happen, things didn't fall through. But we uh, definitely learned a lot this weekend, first conference play, and like Eric said, we were in the same boat as we were last year. Now, 
And so hopefully we can just pick up from last year and hopefully get that rolling again. Um, as you uh, get into the conference season here, you got more games this week in Wayne. Um, what, are, what are some of the things you're working on right now to kind of shore up and improve, uh, Colton? Uh, I know for us, we just had a pitch, pitcher meeting and we were talking about how a lot of the guys this year with the new balls are swinging more at first pitch strikes and stuff because uh, those balls travel farther with the smaller laces and stuff. So we got to work more on our strikeout pitches and stuff when we get ahead in the counts. So uh, we didn't do too good of a job of that last weekend. And so that's one thing that we're looking on improving this week. Um, and then as, at least for the hitters wise, um, you know, just kind of sticking with our approach, um, you know, it's keep it on like the, if we see a first pitch fastball, we want to jump on it. We don't want to get behind the count early. Um, so kind of just want to at least play to our, play to our advantage. You know, if we see a first pitch strike, you know, we want to take advantage of that. And so, you know, we kind of need to stick to that mentality and, uh, you know, just kind of ride it out and hopefully we get, uh, can fix things when we get to Wayne next week. Has it been tough with the with the lower laces and everything to, to throw certain pitches? or uh, For some pitches it is, uh, just because it's smaller lace, so you can't get as good of a grip. But um, I was reading an article or something, home runs and stuff have already gone up like 50% compared to last year, but strikeouts have also gone up. So, because you do get more break in the ball and stuff once mm -hmm. you get used to it. So it goes both ways, I guess. Well, um, you on your left side of the infield there, of course, uh, playing short, uh, having to adjust for a different third baseman over there with uh, Stubbs getting dinged. Uh, was that the weirdest kind of injury you guys have been involved with? Somebody just yeah, breaking I mean, a hand on a Yeah, hand? well, I know like during the winter, he was kind of he was kind of talking about how he had some pain in his wrist. And then after when we got closer to Arizona, he goes, oh, it, you know, it feels good. Um, and then shoot one in one game, he just took a swing and just felt terrible amount of pain and I was like no oh, this is not good obviously and so it's been it's been a weird adjustment but Mark has definitely stepped in and filled the role really well um, you know just he's pretty much not missing a beat really but you know it's it sucks not having one of our better hitters from last year not being the lineup for sure and uh, speaking of hitters uh, a lot of people always wondering about uh, Lucas Lorenz even though it's his first year there but uh, it seems like he's really starting to take off lately. oh he is definitely I know he had like, a little bit of a slow start in Arizona, but I mean, the kid's a freshman, you know, I, I ex kind of expected, you know, him having the first game jitters and all that stuff, but once he settled in, I think he just, he kind of just taken off from there. I mean, she, he's had, what, two home runs already? Yeah. yeah and so, I think like three triples. Or yeah, exactly. He's, he's definitely turned triples. around a lot. So, um, <laughs> now, is, is Stubb still hanging around in the bullpen, or the bullpen, the uh, dugout and kind of cheering you guys on? and? Pulling pranks. Yeah, well, actually, stuff. he's not. I don't know about pulling pranks, <laughs> but yeah, he's been keeping book and you know just still being a leader out there, at least in the dugout and keeping us up and everything and kind of you know, filling the role at least as that as that kind of person. As we get to wrap things up here with Eric O'Brien, Colton Boucher, uh, Wayne on the schedule this weekend. Um, you guys like their their field? You guys go down there last year with the big wood fence and all that? Or we did go that. Yeah, we did go down there last year. It's a pretty pretty nice field though. Um, I mean the. Grass is kind of dead, but um, but it's kind of a it's a it's a pretty nice field, and yeah, with the old school style wooden fence out there, it's a it's a pretty neat field. I like it as a pitcher. It's longer than Augie's field. It's not three ten, so yeah. can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, now, uh, Eric, you're a criminal justice major, and Colton in bio, right? Yep. And how are the classes going so far? Uh, really good. Um, the, for the criminal justice side, uh, I took a lot of my credits out in Centralia, and so when I got here, I wasn't able to take a lot since I already had a lot of it done. Um, but I'm taking one of the classes I'm taking this semester is a criminal procedure class, kind of learning the criminal justice system and you know dealing with what kind of situation you know if you're becoming a cop and dealing with certain cases and stuff like that. And I'm just I'm just so thrilled to to get to know more because that's something I want to do in the future. Uh, my classes are going good, uh, just trying to keep up with labs and stuff because you have three hour labs a week and you get to miss a lot of those. So like yesterday I had to make up a molecular biology lab, just go in there by myself and <laughs> do part of the work. So it gets complicated, it gets hard, but it'll be worth it in the end. That sounds fun. <laughs> and uh, as we wrap things up here, um, what uh, a couple of entertainment questions, what would be the, I don't usually ask what favorite movie is, but uh, what's your favorite baseball movie? Because there's so many Ooh. good ones. Um, 
I definitely have to say The Sandlot. It's such a such a classic that I think all of us kids can relate to. I think that's definitely my favorite for sure. Oh, uh, well, uh, what's that one we watched on the bus the other day, the one with the pitcher uh, for the love of the game? Yep, for yep. the love of the game, oh, okay. yep. So yeah. as a pitcher, that's a great movie to watch, so. And uh, since you're both from the Pacific Northwest, uh, land of the, probably the best music in the country, <laughs> uh, if you were to head on a road trip, what would be a couple of uh, CDs or artists you'd take with you as far as uh, music? Um, actually, ever since I got out here, I got really into country. And so I kind of, <laughs> I, I know it's kind of, yeah, I just, I, ever since, you know, being out here and being with different guys, I've just fell in love with country. So I, if I had to pick one, I would say Florida Georgia Line for sure. Well, I can't complain. I'm on Fez and Country 103, so I can't say anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> Me, I just like a little mix of everything. Uh, even that little hipster type music we have back in the West Coast, I enjoy some of that, but not any specific artist, I guess. All right. Well, that'll work. Thanks for coming on, guys, and uh, have a good trip. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Colton Boucher, Eric O'Brien here with us on Track of the Wolves. We'll look at the schedule coming up for the weekend next year on Track of the Wolves. We know you want family-friendly sporting events. Sporting events where you can be comfortable. And entertained in a positive environment. Watching great individuals and teams compete. With commitment, effort, and good sportsmanship. That's what the Division II Game Environment Initiative is about. Be a part of the excitement and find out why. These student athletes say with pride, I chose. I chose. I chose Division II. Welcome back to Tracking the Wolves. Let's check the upcoming schedule for your northern teams. Originally scheduled for Tuesday, the softball squad is going to open conference play Thursday this week instead when they host MSU Moorhead at the Moxon Creek Softball Complex. Ladies will then hit the road for the weekend, visiting SMSU Saturday, and then heading down to Sioux Falls, taking on the Cougars on Sunday. Wolves women right now, 13-10 and 10 this season. Baseball team's going to gas up the bus this weekend as well. They'll visit Wayne America. Doubleheaders coming up on Saturday and Sunday there against the Wildcats. And the track and field teams are also going down to Wayne for an invite at the Wildcats facilities. Those events will be this Friday and Saturday. That's going to do it for this episode of Track of the Wolves. To stay up to date on the latest Northern Sports Notes, join me for another edition next week right here. And until then, as always, go Wolves.